Hello, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to Trek on Tuesday. Aaron, I'm so glad you made it. I know we just uh, we changed the timing on our, our treks a few weeks ago. So to see you here, to be here, to see all of our viewers here, it feels good to just be getting together again. Definitely. I definitely had to update my calendar and get out of the mindset of doing uh, Trek at 2 every Monday and Wednesday at 2 p.m. And I'm happy to be here with you, Gina, at 3 p.m. on Tuesday. This is our second ever Trek at Tuesday, I think. And it, it, we have third, a, is, third? am I right on that? Is this our third Trek on Tuesday? It's our third. Can you believe well, it? I can't even. It's, it's our time. Now. Time goes by so fast. Exactly. But yes, I'm happy to be here. A little bit of a bittersweet show today. Uh, it's going to be fun. We have we have some fun things to talk about. Um, is, is it okay if I tell the folks what we're talking about today? Am I allowed to just come out and say it? Absolutely. So uh, today uh, we're going to talk about a beloved longtime author and longtime contributor to uh, previously Boy's Life, now Scout Life magazine, Gary Paulson. Uh, Mr. Paulson unfortunately passed away earlier this year. He's no longer with us, but he does have a new book that's going to be published. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, it is out right now. It is available for purchase. We're going to get into all that. We're going to talk about Gary's contributions to uh, the BSA, uh, Boys Life magazine, and kind of why we think that a lot of his books, I think, ring true with scouts. He had a lot of interest, and I think what interests a lot of scouts. So there's lots of cool stuff to talk about. His books very much, you know, adventure, outdoors-based, all that good stuff like that. Uh, most of them are appropriate for kids, definitely uh, maybe older kids, but depending on how good of a reader your kid is, you know, uh, I've read, a, I read through a few of them, and they are they're very well written. They're a little bit tricky if you're not like, you know, a good reader. We're going to get into all that. Uh, we also have a giveaway, I believe, right, Gina? Yes, that's right. We promised you at the top of the month that there would be giveaways every Tuesday on Trek on Tuesday. And we are making good on that today. We've got a Scouts BSA branded, it's really just a generic BSA branded pocket knife. You should only be using it with, you know, uh, qualified adult supervision if you are not yet trained with a pocket knife, Cub Scouts, talk to your parents. But anyway, we're giving this away today. Comment for a chance to win. I'm curious if you're looking for some comment um, prompts. I'm curious if you read a Gary Paulson novel in school growing up. Mm -hmm. Let us know what it was. But you can comment with anything. Um, this is a pretty cool multi-tool. The book that I read growing up in school was um, Hatchet. Mm -hmm. So I thought today it made sense to give away a pocket knife because the hatchet proved to be very useful and life-saving mm -hmm. in that book. Mm -hmm. But I think maybe a pocket knife would be even more crucial clutch if you were stranded all by yourself. Well, especially a multi-tool like this one here that can, as the name implies, do multiple things. I believe that's one of the scout essentials, um, a pocket knife or a multi-tool. So absolutely, yes. And definitely something that uh, Paulson would have approved of. As you said, Gina, uh, the book Hatchet. Uh, I did not read Hatchet in school. Uh, well, I'm kind of jealous that you did, uh, but a required reading, I think, for, for a lot of folks. A lot of folks may have read that in school. Hatchet's one of his most uh, famous books. He also wrote a book called The River, and he wrote a book called Brian's Winter, uh, which actually ended up being a series of books. All of them kind of similar themes, Gina, of outdoors, adventure, uh, rugged, kind of being self-reliant in the outdoors. A lot of the things that we teach in scouting I think, which probably makes sense that that's why um, it rings true. Uh, these books ring true to so many scouts, I think. Yeah, they're very, very scouty, the books. Um, and mm -hmm. so much is about outdoors skills and wilderness survival. And um, that reminds me, so we've run quite a few Gary Paulson excerpt short stories through over, over the years. I know that you mentioned that at, in Boy's Life and now Scout Life. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, a little insider tip, if you don't have the print copy of the March edition yet, which you probably don't, you can get on the digital edition right now for free and check out Wolf Dreams. There's a reprint of this story running right now, or you can check it out at fiction.scoutlife.org slash wolf dreams. Um, my favorite feature is having the robot read these to you while you're doing other things. <laughs> but again, this is a Gary Paulson um, excerpt, or an excerpt from, uh, or well, Wolf Dreams was written for us, but I think by Gary Paulson, and we've run it a couple times. Great story. Mm -hmm. Even, Aaron, do you remember that mm -hmm. we read it on Trek It 2? Yes, I do. It's very cool. That was one of my favorite stories. We've read a handful of short stories, fiction stories, during our time at Trek It 2, and that was the best one, I think, 
uh, yeah, we're very lucky uh, to have contributors uh, like Gary Paulson to uh, previously Boys Life and now Scout Life magazine. And like we said, kind of fits in with uh, scouting and all the stuff like that. You can even see from that piece of art right there, uh, you know, outdoors and all that stuff right there. Uh, like how, how scouting is that? Uh, very, very cool. Very, very exciting. Tell us in the comments again, uh, if you do enter to win, all you gotta do is make a comment. Uh, if you have a favorite uh, Gary Paulson novel or anything like that, or if you just want to just say hi, we'll give you some shout outs. We're fine Which, with that. Erin, speaking of shout outs, um, Lark has Hatchet. She, she commented saying, I think Hatchet might have been what they read. Jennifer mm -hmm. says Gary Paulson is one of her favorite authors. She used his books as a student teacher and as a teacher. She has most of his oh, novels cool. and often recommends them to young people. You might like checking out North Wind, Jennifer. We're going to share yes. that with you in just a yeah, minute. Jennifer. How you get your hands on that? Right. I was just going to say, we're, we're going to talk about Northwind here in just a minute. That's his latest one. Uh, unfortunately, it will be his last one. Uh, but we're going to talk about that where you can buy it, kind of what it's about uh, here in just a second. Yeah. So keep these comments coming. Let us know um, which books by Gary Paulson you've read. Or if you've read a short story, we would love to hear that. And if you've read it in Scout Life or Boys Life, we would double love to hear that. Good news for you, Aaron. I was worried he wasn't going to make the jump to truck on Tuesdays, but he's here. Xavier's in the house. Pack 817. What's up, Xavier? We're glad to see you here. I'm glad, I'm glad you made the transition. I think a lot of folks have made the transition uh, so far, which is really cool. We're glad to see it. Uh, so uh, Mr. Paulson, unfortunately, passed away last fall. Uh, I was lucky enough to write a story on Brian on scouting uh, about him and about his contribution. So I did a little bit of research. About it. I didn't know that that much about his life or his history or anything like that. He lived a really interesting life, Gina. Uh, we mentioned he, you know the, you mentioned the book Hatchet, uh, also the River and Brian song. Um, there's an award, Gina, for uh, uh, children's authors called the Newbery Honors. Uh, he won that thing three times, the best book of the year, as determined by the Association of Library Service to Children. So basically, like the Academy Awards for best kids books. So that kind of tells you right there what we're talking about with Gary Paulson. And again, how lucky we have, we were to um, have him contribute to Boys Life Magazine, a book called Dog Song in 1986. Uh, Jennifer might recognize this. Hatchet, you mentioned, was written in 1988. And uh, The Winter Room went in 1990, all won Newbery Honors, which is basically, uh, you know, like I said, it's the highest award you can get for kids publishing. Uh, another honor, that Gary Paulson earned. I don't know if Gary ever knew this, but um, a few years ago, we did, uh, the, the people who were at Boys Life at the time made a list of the top 100 books that all kids should read. It was in honor of the 100th birthday of the BSA. And we've updated it over the years since then. Gary made the list. Hatchet is one of the 100 books on our list uh, that all kids should read. If you're interested in that, you can find it on scoutlife.org. If, if you just type in the uh, scoutlife.org search field, 100 books, it will come up. Lots of good stuff on there. He's certainly in good company. Um, but I think Hatchet, you know, there's something about that outdoor adventure that applies uh, or, or really resonates, I think, with young readers. Yes, Hatchet is really getting a lot of love in the comments. Elizabeth is mentioning that she loves it. Now, Wayne, I think in reference to the pocket knife we're giving away, and reminder, guys, if you want to win that pocket knife, you need to leave a comment on this video. But he's mentioning that he carries both a multi-tool and a knife as part of his everyday carry. I think that Gary Paulson would approve of that. Um, we got a shout out Western Nebraska, Troop 601 in Farmingdale, Amanda's Red Hatchet. Um, Jason likes seeing that knife picture. He thinks that that's a good looking knife. Very good pocket knife. Um, a lot of folks saying, we need that knife. My scout needs that knife. So uh, <laughs> guys, you're doing the right thing by letting us know. Yep. Just keep those comments coming. That's right. All you got to do is comment to enter for a chance to win that knife. Um, do you know, as I was writing this story about Mr. Paulson, I reached out to a guy who was my boss uh, many, many years ago at Boys Life magazine. And for those of you who don't know, I've been at Boys Life a few years longer than Gina has. I started in the early 2000s. And my boss at the time had already been there for a, a, you know 20 years or so. So he actually knew Gary Paulson and had worked with him and had assigned stories to him. And he, you know, considered him a, a friend and a peer, uh, which is very, very cool. I, so to speak, you know, I, I guess you could say Gary and I are related 
through like, um, what is it called? Like two different connections, you know, be me back to my former boss. You're two degrees removed boss, from Two Gary degrees, Paulson. two degrees. Yes, thank you, exactly. Yeah, that's but, pretty cool. Well, well you and, you're you really just one degree because you've both worked on Scout Life magazine. Exactly, exactly. Thank you. Uh, he was a little more talented and prolific than I have been, but I've got time. I've got time. Yeah, that's yet to um, be seen. Yes, exactly. <laughs> one thing that's interesting about that, and this is something that I didn't know, even as a guy who was familiar with Gary Paulson's work, I did not know that a lot of his stories were based on his personal experiences. He left his house, Gina, at the age of 14. Uh, depending on the account that you read, you might say that he, you might read that he ran away from home. Uh, so others just say that he left home. Maybe it wasn't that big of a deal back then to just be at 14, be like, I'm out of here. I'm, I'm headed out to the wild guys, you know, and maybe it wasn't like he actually ran away or whatever. Uh, he traveled with the carnival for a while. That was his life. He, he lived and worked uh, at a carnival. He took jobs as an engineer, construction worker, ranch hand, truck driver and sailor. He basically experienced all these different things. And then lo and behold, all of them, or a lot of them at least showed up in his books later on. Uh, he even participated in the Iditarod, which is the uh, 1000 mile dog sled race through Alaska. I mentioned that book, Wolf Dreams. We just showed that image of the young boy on the uh, on the wolf sled or on the sled right there, Bob sled. There you go. Exactly. I mean, Gary Paulson did that. He's been there. He's done that. Okay. They say, write about what you know. And I think that Gary kind of kind of did that actually. Now that's cool. I, I did. I mean, I knew what he. I knew the uh, typical themes of what he wrote about and how uh, you know into the outdoors he was. But I didn't realize he had lived that life. But of course, I should have assumed that's how he writes about it so well. Wrote about it so yes. well. And I mean, a lot of his. Of, mm -hmm. Oh, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, he, in his writing, he, it's known for um, being very detail oriented. He describes, uh, you know, in in infinite, uh, you know, really details everything that's happening, which is probably something you can you either have to do, you know, tons and tons and tons of research, or you've done it yourself. And in this case, he did it himself, so it's easy enough to go through the details of how it feels. How does it really feel? to, uh, you know, ride a, a dog sled in the freezing cold, right? Because he, he's done it, so he knows. You know, That's a lot better knows. than maybe yeah. just talking to someone else who has done it. That's right. So we have a couple of questions in the comments about how can you get featured in Scout Life. Great question. You need to mm. head to scoutlife.org. There are a lot of ways to get featured in Scout Life. Um, I think even some of you are asking, like, how can you become a fiction writer in Scout Life? There's information on that um, on scoutlife.org, so check it out. You have to be kind of a big deal to get into the fiction section, hence like Gary Paulson. But there is an opportunity if you wanna show off your writing skills in a big way, right, Erin? Um, there is a contest related to Northwind that yes. is going on. He, yes, uh, Gary Paulson was very passionate. Uh, again, talk about alignment. Uh, you know, One of the things about boys' life and scout life is that we, we try to get kids to read, right? We try to get young men and women to read and Gary Paulson shared that passion. He really wanted kids to get into reading and getting into writing. Um, Gary Paulson himself said that he really found his home. Like he did all these travels, he did all these different things. He really felt like he found his home in his local library. That was where he felt the most at home. So reading and writing was very passionate to him. And um, he did start a contest, Gina. It is called, because I've got it right here, the Northwind Storytelling Contest. There it is right there. Write a short story inspired by this book, which is now available. Um, and you can be entered to win a contest. Uh, you may actually see your story published, which is very, very cool. If you're interested in becoming a writer, uh, you can participate in a writing, a writing workshop. Now, this is for, uh, Gina, this is for storytellers aged 10 to 14. So if you're a, an adult writer, uh, pass this along. Maybe you've got kids who you know who are interested right. in telling stories, interesting in writing. Uh, they don't have to write a novel to win, to be entered in this contest, Gina. Uh, they just have to write a story. It just needs to be in, a story inspired by this new book, Northwind, which, may, which maybe now is a good time to let the folks know uh, where they can purchase Northwind from. We've got a link to take you to a uh, website where you can buy the Northwind novel right now. You can, of course, buy it at a bookstore, bookstore near you. We encourage you to support local bookstores. Uh, you could also buy it at this link right here below. Yeah, check that out. A lot of you are super passionate about some of Gary's novels. So if you are, you definitely need to check out Northwind. I think here in a second, Aaron's going to give us just a tiny, tiny little excerpt from it. He um, mm -hmm. has a copy. And also I want to shout out 
um, Arnold and Pack 304 who are watching. Wendy says this is a great topic. Thank you, Wendy. Thanks for tuning in. Um, somebody was called, oh, the river. Arnold says the river is, is one of his favorites of Gary Paulson. Love to see another book yep. making the list here in the comments. And Jason mm -hmm. says, thanks for continuing to have these presentations each week. Thank oh, you, Jason. Thank you, Jason, us. for watching. Yes. And also yes. thank you for entering our contest today to win the pocket knife by, Hey, we always love compliments. If you want to compliment Gina and me, you're entered to win. Oh, Just all you gotta go do ahead. is talk about how great we are. Yes. We love yeah. it. Yeah, well, that's so, not by design or anything. No, of course not. Of course <laughs> not. Uh, I do want to talk about his latest book, Northwind, uh, which is out and available right now. We have got actually a little video trailer. You know, this is kind of cool, Gina. Folks are starting, oh, cool. everybody knows about movie trailers, but some folks are starting to make book trailers, and we have a, a book trailer to show. Let's show that real quick, and then we'll talk a little bit more about the story and different elements of Northwind. So you can see from that video, Gina, early reactions to the novel have been very, very positive. Uh, it seems to hold up with the rest of his work just as well. So if you like Gary Paulson's other novels, probably gonna like this one. If you've never read one, it seems to me this is a fine place to start. Uh, Northwind tells the story of an orphan named Leif, Gina, L-E-I-F, who takes to the water in a cedar canoe after a deadly plague decimates his fishing village. As he travels northward, he encounters one danger after another, connecting to his truest self along the way. Um, very, very cool story. I think very sort of traditional Paulson type story. A uh, young person going off into the wild, uh, obviously having to survive, but also learning a lot about themselves along the way. Um, there's a scene. You know, there's in the always book. like a, I was just gonna say, no. there's always that kind of like a bittersweet sentiment to his books. Seems like mm -hmm. they usually end positively. The character's grown quite a bit, but there is some tragedy involved in all of them, it seems. Mm -hmm. Yep, 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 exactly, exactly. Um, there are some scenes in the book, in this new book, that uh, will probably resonate with a lot of scouts uh, as far as things that, that maybe they learned actually in scouting. For example, there's a situation where Leaf has to start a fire using flint and steel. That's something that scouts BSA members practice uh, all the time, just in case. Um, there's one time he has to, you know, in, in order to start this fire, he has to find tinder. So what, what makes the right kind of tinder? He spends time searching around trying to find tinder and things like that. Very, 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 very similar to what my son uh, has done in Scouts PSA at summer camp and things like that. Uh, there's also a part, obviously he fishes, this main character fishes for food. Uh, in, it, they don't, in, in the movies, when they show you fishing for food, they don't normally show you the details, but Paulson goes into the details of once you catch the fish, that's obviously just half the battle. You got to know how to clean it. You got to know how to cook it. You don't just eat it, right? So Paulson gets into those details. Um, talks about uh, catching, cleaning, and eating a salmon while saving the liver, skin, and skeleton later to create soup. So, you know, Paulson goes into these details of how you actually do that because he knows. He's done it before. He's been there. He's done that. Um, also in this book, just as a little teaser, there might be some bear encounters, Gina. That's all I'm saying. There are some bear encounters in Northwind. Ooh. Okay, this has got a lot in it that I think any Scouts BSA scout who is um, into maybe like the wilderness survival badge, they need this book. There's no question about it. And we've got to remind you, this is Gary Paulson's last novel. Mm -hmm. um, he unfortunately passed away. Definitely check out Aaron's story. He wrote on Brian on Scouting. It's a great one. It recaps some of what we've talked today, but it's got a little extra. Um, so check that out. But yeah, he's unfortunately passed away, but he has left us with this novel and you can grab it, snag it. I don't know, maybe you're mm -hmm. looking for an Easter present for your scout or something. Um, head to the link that we'll put up on the, yeah, the bottom of the screen and you can learn more about the book. You can see, kind of see the back and some of the reviews and you can also 
grab your own copy. Reminder, guys, this is the last few minutes to get in your comments. We are going to be giving away a pocket knife in just a few minutes. It's our answer to hatchet. It's pocket knife. And Aaron, I think you have like the very, is, did you say you were going to read the very first? Yeah, book? I was really interested. We were lucky enough to get a digital copy of the book. And I haven't finished it, but it's very cool. And I was really struck by uh, Paulson's writing style. And I thought I would share a little bit of that. Uh, before I do, real quick, I'm glad you mentioned Brian on Scouting. If, if anybody wants to go to Brian on Scouting and just search for Paulson on that website, P-A-U-L-S-E-N, you'll see a couple of stories we've done with a lot of details, including information about how to purchase this book and also details about Mr. Paulson's life and past contributions to Boys Life and Scout Life magazine. But speaking of Northwind, yeah, I thought it, it's really interesting the way it's written, Gina. Um, I would say uh, definitely for kids, but you also have to be a, you know, a pretty good reader. Uh, so if your kid is a good reader, you know, a, 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 a voracious reader, they're going to love this. They're going to eat it up. Uh, I don't want to say challenging because it's not really challenging to read, but it's definitely not, you know, it's definitely written by a master wordsmith, right? This is definitely a guy sure. who knows the English language. Um, maybe I'll just read real quick, just the first really bit part of it. The very first chapter right off the bat is really cool. It's called the saga of sea child. And I just love the way he writes this, Gina. And it came to pass he was born of a woman of the sea, born of a sea woman with a blood clot held tightly in his tiny fist, a sign, a sign to tell, to tell of hardship and danger in the life to come, uh, to come from the tiny fist and clot and the mother of no remembered name did die birthing the boy and the father also of no remembered name had passed to Valhalla fighting a whale and there was no other named family, the boy was born an orphan alone. So that's how the story begins. Very, very cool, very interesting, very it's intriguing. Not that sad tragedy it, right there. Yes, it beginning. does. It, it, it's, kind of the, it's kind of the old, um, Disney did it with uh, both Bambi and Finding Nemo, right? Both of those adventures started off with a tragedy. Uh, seems kind of similar to that. And this young, young boy, uh, his, his, his village, fishing village is decimated by disease and he has to leave and go off on an adventure on his own. It sounds really thrilling. Um, I'm lucky enough to have a digital copy myself. No big deal. You guys can buy them right now. The North one is on sale right now at a local bookseller on you, uh, or you can buy it online. I think we have a link right there. Very, 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 um, cool. Very interesting. Um, and Gina, uh, I think maybe it's time to put those glasses on and uh, choose a winner. <laughs> Gina always, yeah. whenever she selects a winner for a contest, she's got to get her glasses on. Uh, thanks to you guys for watching and commenting along the way. Let's see who Gina uh, pulls us uh, chooses for a winner. Yes, yeah, so some quick final comments. Xavier says that he's working on his whittling chip badge and his brother has a hatchet. Now that oh, yes. very scouty and cool. Mm -hmm. but definitely. Um, Wayne says he uses flint and steel often to keep in practice. Lon or Lan says his kids read Hatchet. Very good. That seems to be a common theme. If you guys haven't read Hatchet, I think that the comments speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. And our winner, I've got it. Okay, our winner, uh, her comment was my Weeblos loves to whittle. And that is Christina Cook on the Scouting Magazine Facebook page today. Christina will message you after the show, we'll get, um, ask you for your address, and then we'll ship this your way. Congratulations. Erin, this was a good day. Um, we Definitely. were certainly sad. We were very sad when we heard of the passing of Gary Paulson, but it is pretty cool that we have this book. You know, it, he's not posthumous exactly. He was working on it as he, you know, before he passed, but it's just mm -hmm. nice to have a little bit of his legacy left to explore and discover. Yes, definitely. And just as a reminder, Gary Paulson, passionate about reading, as you can see from that quote right there, um, there is a contest. Maybe I can get behind the scenes brand to throw that contest URL up in the page. One more time, it's called the Northwind Storytelling Contest. It's open to kids ages 10 to 14. All you got to do is read Northwind and then write a little story inspired by Northwind. Some folks call that fan fiction, I think, Gina, but it could be whatever you want it to be, just any kind of short story. And hey, if you're interested in, in becoming a writer or maybe writing more by entering that contest, you'll enter yourself for a chance to not only have it published, but also to attend a writer's workshop and things like that. Very cool opportunity. Very, very neat what they're doing uh, there uh, at Macmillan Kids. It's called Mac Kids School and Library, Gina. Awesome 
Awesome. Um, you'll continue to see Gary Paulson probably in the pages of Scout Life Mag. And don't forget, you can check out the ex excerpt we're running this month in the, well, Mar in the March issue of Scout Life, mm -hmm. but you can check it out right now in the Scout Life app. So download that app. It's there for free. You can also read it online, fiction.scoutlife.org slash wolf dreams. It's a good one. Or you could scroll back and you could find me and Aaron reading it on Trek It Too. I believe it was about <laughs> six months ago. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's really probably the definitive way to get the story is to hear Gina and I reading it. But it, it is cool that we get to sort of reshare Gary's work uh, with new readers, you know, as, as boys life readers, scout life readers age out and, and, and go off into the world, we get to introduce uh, a whole new generation of readers to Gary Paulson. That's why we run these stories, you know, once every few years or so, because uh, they're still relevant. They still work. Still very cool. Uh, congratulations to the winner of our pocket knife. Good job commenting, everybody. Yeah. We're, we're going to be back uh, next Tuesday for another Trek on Tuesday, Gina. I think we're, in, we're into the flow now. I think we've got it now. Yes, we'll be here for Trek on Tuesday. There'll be another giveaway and it's gonna be a good one. So don't miss it. We'll also be here Friday for Cub Chat Live. Don't miss that either. That'll mm -hmm. be at 2 p.m. Central. Nothing has changed about Cub Chat Live. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Good job, Gina. Thank you for joining me today. Appreciate it. Good job, everybody commenting and watching. We appreciate it. Check out Northwind by Gary Paulson. And we will see everybody later. <laughs>